The ulnar gutter splint is used to immobilize the metacarpals on the ulnar side of the hand. In this presentation, the application of the ulnar gutter splint will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the ulnar gutter splint, a plaster splint that will immobilize the metacarpals on the ulnar side of the hand. The ulnar gutter splint is indicated for metacarpal neck and shaft fractures. In this x-ray, a fracture of the neck of the second metacarpal is shown. A fracture of the neck of the fifth metacarpal with volar displacement of the distal fragment and dorsal angulation can be seen in this x-ray. In this x-ray, fractures of both the fourth and fifth metacarpals can be seen. They are typical cases for an ulnar gutter splint. This dorsal angulation typically needs to be corrected. The method used to reduce the metacarpal neck fracture is illustrated. This diagram shows the two-point pressure provided by a correctly molded gutter splint, which maintains the reduction of a metacarpal fracture. Malrotation is illustrated here. In both the gutter splint and extension block splint, buddy splinting is important to prevent such malrotation of the fingers. To apply the ulnar gutter splint, the following materials are needed. Cotton wool, used for undercast padding. Surgical tape, which is used for buddy splinting. Scissors. Plaster slabs that are generally five layers thick and are available in differing widths. A crepe bandage to secure the plaster slabs. And water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated next to a table or trolley with the elbow at the edge of the table to allow full access to the forearm and wrist. To begin, the patient's hand is examined for rotation of the metacarpals. To correct any rotation or prevent the introduction of any rotational deformities, the fourth and fifth fingers are buddy splinted together. A piece of gauze or cotton wool is placed between the fingers and they're taped together. The material prevents skin maceration from skin on skin contact. With severe swelling of the knuckles, the direction of both fingernails must be the same. The fingers should lie side by side in the same plane. The cotton wool with a width of 100 millimeters will be used as undercast padding. A slit is cut in the cotton wool for the first web space. The cotton wool is gently wound on towards the elbow with an overlap of 50%. The 50% overlap creates a double layer of padding, which is sufficient in most cases. The proximal border of the ulnar gutter is about two fingers below the crease of the elbow. The cotton wool extends slightly beyond the planned edge of the slab to provide a soft edge. Additional cotton wool is wrapped around the fourth and fifth fingers and the metacarpal heads.
The amount of cotton wool used should be sufficient to eliminate pressure points, but not interfere with the molding. The length of the slab is determined using the PIP joint as a landmark. The slab is then cut to length. The slab is wettened by pulling it through the water. The excess water is removed by squeezing it. The slab is applied around the fifth finger and ulnar side, forming a gutter or channel. The splint should be well molded to maintain the reduction, with support under the metacarpal head. Dorsal molding will correct any dorsal angulation. Beginning at the proximal end, the slab is secured in place by winding a crepe bandage around the forearm and wrist. The bandage should pass through the first web space, around the wrist, and then around the fingers to be secured. Any excess bandage is unnecessary, so the end of the bandage is trimmed. The plaster is now molded with pressure from two fingers around the shaft of the metacarpal and the thumb over the head of the metacarpal. Counter pressure is applied with the other hand to ensure 90 degree flexion of the MP joints to prevent stiffness. The wrist is supported to prevent overflexion. The pressure is maintained until the plaster has set. However, the plaster will not achieve full strength for 36 hours. The cotton wool at the edge of the slab and the thumb is folded over to provide a softer edge and can be secured with the leftover crepe bandage. Flexion of the thumb is verified. This flexion will allow the patient to continue to pinch the thumb and fingers together. The application of the ulnar gutter is now complete. The reduction may be verified with an x-ray. The exercises for the patient may now be explained and demonstrated.